Does anybody else is earth sleeving do this? <laughs> it just turns into this fucking mess of 66 cut ends. Can a manufacturer please come up with something like, I don't know, a spring loaded way, I don't know. The ones on the drums work, but then the drums after a few weeks, they just separate and then you still get this. Can a manufacturer please come up with something better than this? I'm sure we can. And can we put Wagos on the back of double sockets? Can we please also do that? Welcome family, welcome back to the channel. Um, now, I'm back here at this job where you saw me fitting these uh, these boards here with the steel trunking. That goes up on that corner there. I'll cut those tails through this. I've got a couple of more jobs here that I think I'm gonna be here like in five years time on a Tuesday. I'm never gonna get away from this place, but I've got some more circuits to run it. He's having some more aircon fitted. So I've got this, uh, we were talking about this in a previous video, this high tough. Well, it's not high tough, it's like a really heavy duty flex. So I've got this, which I've got to run in for one, um, what's the word, you know, those do refer coids, isolators, that's it. I've got an isolator outside, I've got to run it in for. So I've got that to run in, which is going on a 20 amp breaker. And there's a socket out on the patio, which I've got to put in as well. So I'm going to run probably two sets of this in. So give me five minutes, let me get set up and we'll uh, touch base in a bit. There were one or two people saying, um, oh, with this configuration that I've done here, um, why didn't I cut a piece of Paxil in between the board and the trunking rather, you know, rather than do the knockouts like this, where I've just done it underneath like you can see there. They were saying, rather than do the knockouts, why didn't you just cut the whole thing out like you see on the three-phase boards and you just put a nice, you know, cut a nice piece of Paxil in. The problem is these are single-phase boards. They're not, I get what you're saying with three-phase boards, but don't forget three-phase boards have a dedicated cutout. It's like an oval-shaped cutout, which you basically take a hammer and you just bash it. The cutout comes out, cut a nice piece of Paxlin in. But here, to cut that in, I would have to, do you see what? I'd have to cut in a slot, like a letterbox slot. And how do you cut a letterbox slot with all these pre-made holes here? It would just, I see what you're saying, but on three-phase, yeah. But on this sort of stuff, I mean, just use a bush and lock ring, I mean, yeah, that's the way I've done it. I don't see what's so bad about it. I thought it's quite a neat finish, actually. Bit of a faff putting it in mine, but you know. There's a company, right? I won't say the name of them, but a quick Google search will provide all the answers. There's a company operating in the city here in London, right? And their sort of MO is that they, they use scooters like mopeds, you know, ying, ying. they use those. <laughs> that was my best description. Ying, ying. They use scooters. And they're saying that they can get to customers faster. They can provide a faster, more slicker service. They can beat the traffic. You know, they can have long lunch breaks by the water cooler and all this shit. How do you, how do you change a fuse board on a scooter? Yeah, I really, I've got a van, right? I need like an extra long wheelbase jumbo transit and it's still not enough. How can you possibly, even just the compression gland case, how do you fit that on a fucking scooter? Do you know what, how? You carry your mega, SDS, you need all of these tools. But they, they're, I mean, they're busy by the, you know, they seem, or well, certainly seem to be. But it's food for thought, and it makes you wonder, how do, when they get to a fuse board and they've got to change it, how, I, I don't understand, how do you carry everything? I don't know, or maybe 10 scooters turn up and they will carry a little bit or something. <laughs> I don't know. A few inches later. All right, back in my little home. <laughs> There was somebody in the last video, can't remember who it was, and I was like, it was when I was working in that little cupboard changing the fuse board. And I was like, apprentices, the novelty wears off really quick. And people were like, that's really unfair. You're not helping people get into the industry. Well, I'm sorry. Look at this. It's not exactly appealing, is it? You know, I mean, I don't mind it. It's, it's all right. It's just working next to the window of much controversy. Zip ties next to the the fire escape window, because it's definitely a fire escape, 100%. Not sure if we should put that in, because it would just start the whole controversy off all again. <laughs> there were people, I swear to God, I'm not lying. There was somebody that was like, ah, oh, yeah, but you, you wouldn't be able to fit through the window, but you could pass a, you could pass a small baby through the window. Fucking baby would be dead. What are you on about? Try to, can you run and try to pass a baby through that window? The, the UPVC melting all over its face. Yeah, all right. I can see that, 100%. <laughs> it's so messed up. The whole building's burning down. Yeah, I'd want to crawl under here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's so stupid, man. But yes, yes, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a fire escape, 
So, that's our cable, and the actual, the old isolator, well, the isolator for that condenser there is just there. And we've got to put another one right next to it. Uh, so that's the one we're using, a BG one, or British garbage, as I call it. They're actually not, to be fair. I think BG, a lot of people have got really strong opinions on BG. Some people say it's really good. I mean, actually, this sort of stuff seems all right, but their fuse boards aren't. I'm not a lover of them, to be honest. All right, quick spider check. I put that post on Twitter the other day. You see it? I put that post on Twitter about, uh, it was a shed. I'll leave the link here. I'll leave the post here for it. It was a shed. I had to disconnect it because the shed actually would have come down today. And I had to disconnect the electrics in it. Oh, man. That was like spider central. I had to, I had to really grab my balls in my hands for that one. It was like, let me tell you, there were arachnids in there. I swear to God, the size of small children. They were, oh, man. I uh, took a lot for me to do that. Did it though. Scream like a girl most most of the time, I'll be honest. I was trying to say to the customer at one point, I was like, you don't really need the electric to come out. I mean, if they're knocking the shed down, they can just, you know, take that, all the electrical stuff away with the shed. And she was having none of it. I was like, fuck, I've got to go in there and disconnect it. Right, fine. I'm just going to have to get under there. I've got a choice. Right, I'm going to assume the position. If boiler comes on, I'll get a face full of carbon monoxide. Okay. Oh. There's some big webs up in here. Do you know, like a class this is a confined space and that way I haven't got to work here? Actually, there's two fixings already there. Hang on. Loads of people are asking where Dave's gone. Dave has left. He's gone his way, I've gone my way. It's quite common, you know, millions of people all get new jobs. So just to put that to bed, because a lot of people were asking about it. Um, he's moved on. And Harry is starting on the 2nd of March. And Jacob, who is the other fellow, he starts, I believe, on the 9th of March. So yeah, for everybody wondering, that's why you've not seen a lot of him, because he's uh, got another job, I believe. He'll do well. He's a good fella. If I sit down here and anything more than four legs crawls on me, I'll be out of here like limp for Christie. Fucking stupid place to put an isolator. I've got to do this above ground. Yesterday morning. No, I didn't. That's Sarah, the new PA. She hates being called an admin. So I piss her off and call her an admin. No, she's the PA. What's the difference between a PA and an admin? I don't know. Oh, is that rain? Oh, fuck. Oh, mate. I know this video is about nine minutes of me just fitting an ice later, but I feel the need to share it with you because this is real, okay? A lot of apprentices and stuff seem to think that you spend your life fitting double sockets above a kitchen worktop and it really isn't. You know, it's this sort of shit. Come on, you melon farmer. Okay, there's one. Okay, we had to postpone that because it's now pissing down with rain. British winters are very cold. Actually, you've only got to be outside in the rain for like two minutes and you just get pissed wet through. Uh, but that isolator is now in. I've got to run in another one, but I'm not doing that today now because it's just pouring down. So... I'm going to go upstairs and see what else I can get on with. I just got an email this minute. Thomas Nagy Limited is now registered for VAT. Fuck. That's a scary thing. I've been putting that off for uh, 11 years. <laughs> you've got to do it. You haven't got a choice. Once you go over the threshold, you've got to, you just, you can't get around it. I'm actually just, I'm not going outside now because it's pissing down with rain. But I've got to put, uh, there's a socket here they want, so I'm just running a feed in for this socket. But yeah, fucking that registered. That's a scary thought. I, I don't know. I don't like the idea of it because you're basically, you're basically in the, you know, a tax collector for the government. That's basically what you are when you're a VAT. When you're VAT registered, you become a tax collector for her madge. And I just don't like, you know, speaking to them once a year is that's more than enough, you know. But now I've got to speak to them four times a year. So I am a little bit nervous about it, but... You can't grow. If you're not VAT registered, you can't grow. Because there's loads of jobs you can't tender for and stuff if you're not VAT registered. I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I've got to stay away from VAT registration at all costs and stuff. Well, you're never going to grow if you don't do it, you know? And I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors with VAT as well. You know, lots of people are like, oh, no, you've got to stay under the threshold, got to stay under the threshold, you know? But I don't think it's actually, it's not as bad as people make out to be. It's just there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. 
Right, so that's on. There's not a lot to show. There's not a lot of this sort of stuff. It's just it's the everyday stuff. You know, there's not a lot to, you know, sockets on. Just do a quick RCD test now. That reminds me, there was um, there was somebody saying. Um, uh, I'll try and leave the comment on screen if I can find it. Somebody was saying you don't show the full range of like you know every single test you do and. I don't, because if I had to show you every single test, like insulation, then RCD testing, ZS testing, you know, if I had to show you all of that, the video would be about 20 minutes long and it'd be boring as fuck. So there's, you know, there's a fair bit of stuff which, you know, you don't see. 17.2 milliseconds. Perfect. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff you don't see because it just, it just cuts it all out and just makes it a bit quicker. Five times, what have we got? 17.7. I'm not a lover of this lead actually on the back of this. I've had it for a few months now. I'm not a lover of when you sit it down on a table, it, you get that, and I can see these leads. Or that will be the weak spot where they break. So um, I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't have just made it like a plug adapter, which just plugs in. You know, like a, th a three-pin adapter. I'm not sure what the idea. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the reason you don't see sometimes the full range of stuff because it's just down to time constraints in the video. You just haven't got time, you know. Me and the camera guy actually we've just been talking about it. You know that Caroline Flack? She, I don't know, you've probably heard about it. Killed herself. And uh, it makes you wonder, you know, that the abuse she got. I know she had that thing with the partner. You know, she threw a lamp at him or something, you know. But it's like... We've all been there, but just because she was in the spotlight and because she was a woman and she threw a lamp at her partner, not even funny. Me and Penny had an argument the other night, a couple of nights ago, and I was so angry. I think I slammed the door so hard on the way out and he took it off his bloody hinges. Yeah, we've all been there. You all argue. But just because she's in the spotlight, you know, and of course the, the media, you know, all these tabloid newspapers and stuff, they just post such shite about it. And of course, they just dangle carrots and then the general public just make up the rest of it themselves, you know. And the abuse she was getting online, man. I was reading some of the Twitter, you know, some of the Twitter comments. And there were like thousands of people, you know, go kill yourself. And of course, you read it, you know. And if she's in a dark place one night, you know, you've only got to log on to Twitter and you just see all this abuse of like thousands, literally thousands of people saying, go kill yourself. Yeah, what do you expect? You know, it just this thing of online abuse, you know. This is why I say it on here. I mean, I've got quite a thick skin. It doesn't bother me if someone thinks I'm a prick. I'm just like, yeah, all right, I'll just, I'll, I'll heart it just to fuck them off, you know, <laughs> don't bother me. But I mean, she had other shit going on as well, but it makes you wonder, you know, this thing of, you know, people just leave abuse, keyboard warriors, you know, they just leave abuse, you know, call you an asshole, go kill yourself, and they just log off and go back and watch porn. But that has an effect on someone else, you know, that it, like her, exactly like her, you know, it probably just got to the point that evening, it was just too much for her, she couldn't take it, you know? It's a shame. But yeah, this thing of social media abuse is rife, you know? And, you know, people who left her abuse, you're partly, you know, not be funny, you're partly responsible for it, you know? You carry part of the blame for that, because there were thousands of people leaving abuse, you know? You're partly to blame for that. I mean, I know, you know, maybe she shouldn't have done it, or well, we've all had arguments where we've, you know, where we've thrown something or, you know, we've all done it, I've done it, you've, you know, everyone's done it. It's just, you know, when you have an argument, things get heated and it just happens, you know, because she's in the spotlight, suddenly it's, it's inflamed more than it should be, you know, but yeah, it goes to show, you know, you leave hate on, you leave hate, it don't take a lot to push someone over the edge. If they, you catch them at the wrong time, you just, it really, it fucks people. Don't do it. It really fucks people up. There were a few people asking these contactors. That generated quite a lot of interest, doing the switching through the um, contactors. The 10 mil is what goes up to the hob, but that one mil that you saw me connecting, which is that one just there, it's only a one mil or a 1.5, whatever it is. All, it is. all it's for is just, it's a, um, that's just the trigger. It doesn't actually carry any load as such. It's just like, um, imagine a relay on a car for your headlights. Because that is basically a relay, it's the same thing. It's just when you flash your headlights in the car, all you're doing, it's, it's the job of that wire there. It's just, it doesn't carry any voltage. I mean, it does, but it doesn't carry any load as such. It's just a trigger, which activates the contactor. So it, that's not actually, because a lot of people are like, you're not connecting that one mil to the hob. I'm not, that, it's just the switch upstairs. It just switches it, that's all. Um, but it is a good way of switching. There were a couple of people who were saying that um, they use it for showers. So rather than have the, which actually makes really good sense, rather than have the big chunky 50 amp pull cords, those horrible things in bathrooms, do away with that, just put a contactor in the board and you just have a nice little six amp switch, which makes good sense. Um, which I've actually got a job coming up where I'm gonna do that because I think it makes really good sense. 
And it's not actually any extra work to fit the contactor. It's just, you just the only extra cost really is the purchase of the contactor. Well, I, once I've published a video, I generally don't look back at it. Once it's published, that's the last time I sort of ever really have anything to do with it. Once it's out, it's out. Um, and the other night, I looked back on the comments on that, you know the BMW Drive video I did where I was test driving that BMW? And the, uh, I think sort of the, the Ainley Retentive Brigade caught on to it. And they were like, because I was saying it's a fantastic car and I love the concept of electric vehicles. Trust me, I'm an ambassador for them. My next van, which I'm going to Nissan tomorrow um, to put the deposit down on, that's electric, a little ENV 200. Love them. Brilliant. You know, I love the, uh, the concept of electric. Um, but the charging system is, is flawed. Um, and people were like, you know, when we got stuck halfway um, and we only had like, I think it was like 12% charge left or whatever it was and I had to charge up. And the amount of people that are like, oh, you should have pre-planned the journey if you'd just done, you know, 30 minutes of pre-planning. Who the fuck does 30 minutes of pre-planning before you get in your car? You wouldn't do that in a petrol or a diesel car. So why should you do it in an electric car? Asking the general Joe public to pre-plan their journey, that's flawed. You can't expect the general public to do... You've got me started now. You can't expect general Joe public to pre-plan their journey. You don't hop into your car and think, OK, I've got to go 100 miles. Now, where's the next nearest petrol station? And just in case I need to stop or in case I get a flat... You can't do it. It's, it's flawed thinking. The idea of the electric will only work if you can just get in your car and go. That's, that's, that, that's how it is. You can't expect anything less than that. That's how it's got to be. So this, this concept of having to pre-plan your journey around charge points is completely... You can't expect people to do that, which is exactly why I didn't do it in that video, because it's, just, it's a flawed... You should be able to get in your car and go. OK, um, that's pretty much all I've got time for in here today, because uh, it's a bit of a bitty job, but it's uh, worth sharing my day with you, I think. So... Uh, that's pretty much all I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you on another video.